Good day and welcome. Have you ever wondered why some communities are at higher risk than others when an earthquake strikes? What can be done to reduce the devastating impact of earthquakes? We are going to investigate these issues and also the unfortunate earthquake that happened in Haiti. From these events, there are lessons to be learned. Relooking at these events will help us to prepare much better for any future events. As we have seen previously, an earthquake is a sudden and violent shaking of the ground, causing great destruction. Earthquakes are a result of movements within the Earth's crust, and they occur due to the release of accumulated stress along fault lines. Several factors contribute to why some communities experience greater earthquake risks than others. People who live close to plate margins are always at a higher risk of being affected by a powerful earthquake. How much an earthquake affects the people in this area depends on a number of things, such as How many people live in the area? The quality of the buildings they live in How well the buildings are made How well the area is prepared for an earthquake The availability of people who can rescue and treat earthquake survivors The rescue plans and rescue equipment available in countries where there are many earthquakes, like Japan and New Zealand, people are able to prepare themselves for the effects of an earthquake by making buildings strong and having very good emergency plans. Being prepared for earthquakes reduces the damage earthquakes can cause. In countries where people are less prepared for earthquakes, more damage and deaths occur. This is true in developing countries. Developing countries are countries where many people are poor and have limited resources. Developing countries suffer most from earthquake damage. Haiti is a less developed country, whereas New Zealand is a more developed country. The earthquakes which took place in Haiti and New Zealand were about the same force. However, the earthquake in Haiti did much more damage. In Christchurch, New Zealand, measures are in place to mitigate the impact of earthquakes. Buildings are constructed to withstand seismic forces, emergency teams are well trained, and communication systems are efficient. The government provides rescue equipment, food, water, and blankets promptly after an earthquake, and designated meeting places ensure organized evacuation. Additionally, Households are encouraged to maintain earthquake kits containing essential supplies. In contrast, Haiti faces significant challenges in earthquake preparedness and response. Buildings are poorly constructed, emergency plans and workers are inadequately trained, and communication systems are slow. Rescue efforts are delayed, resulting in increased casualties and widespread confusion among the population. Furthermore, the lack of medical resources contributes to a higher mortality rate among the injured, while disease outbreaks exacerbate the humanitarian crisis. This summary highlights the stark differences in earthquake preparedness and response between New Zealand and Haiti. It underscores the critical importance of proactive measures such as robust infrastructure, effective emergency planning, and swift communication systems in mitigating the impact of seismic events. The contrasting outcomes in these two countries serve as a sobering reminder of the dire consequences that inadequate preparedness can have. Let's summarize the reasons why some communities are impacted more by earthquakes than others. Location, communities that are near to tectonic plate boundaries or fault lines are at a higher risk of earthquakes. For instance, the Pacific Ring of Fire, which encircles the Pacific Ocean, is prone to frequent seismic activity. Highly populated areas, areas with a high population are more vulnerable to earthquake hazards. This means, urban areas with large numbers of people are more at risk than rural areas with low populations. Living close to the sea, People who live close to the sea where earthquakes occur may experience tsunamis. Poor building construction, 
communities with poorly constructed buildings and infrastructure are at greater risk during earthquakes. Structures that are not built to withstand earthquakes are more likely to collapse or suffer severe damage. Lack of preparedness, communities that lack adequate earthquake preparedness measures, such as emergency response plans, public education, and infrastructure reinforcement, are more vulnerable to the impact of earthquakes. Communities with poor rescue plans can wait days before rescue teams reach the area to help the survivors. Lack of good communication links, settlements that do not have good communication links such as a remote rural area, are in danger of not being able to phone for help. Infrastructure, communities with weak infrastructure like roads, bridges, and power lines are more susceptible to damage and disruption following an earthquake. Low-income communities often have limited resources for building earthquake-resistant structures, disaster preparedness training, and post-disaster recovery efforts. Additionally, limited access to healthcare and communication infrastructure can worsen the impact. Developing countries like Mexico and Haiti suffer badly when an earthquake strikes. Developing countries are usually poor. Their governments do not have enough money to deal with the effects of a big earthquake. They rely on help from other countries. More developed countries are richer. Their governments build stronger buildings and have rescue teams and doctors who can help people. Getting ready for an earthquake and dealing with it afterward are two different things. Preparedness is all about getting ready before the earthquake happens. This means doing things like making plans, checking buildings to make sure they're safe, and teaching people what to do if an earthquake hits. Response is what happens right after the earthquake. It's about helping people who are hurt, giving them food and shelter, and fixing things that got broken. Both getting ready and responding quickly are super important to help communities bounce back from earthquakes and other disasters. Now let's look in detail at how people can prepare for an earthquake and how they can respond to an earthquake. Preparedness measures include the following. Education and awareness, educating the public about earthquake risks, safety measures, and emergency procedures can help communities prepare for and respond to earthquakes effectively. Strict building regulations, implementing and enforcing strict building regulations can ensure that structures are designed and constructed to withstand earthquakes. Buildings in areas where there is a high risk of an earthquake are required to follow strict rules or regulations. These buildings have to have special foundations that allow the earth to move without the building collapsing. Some of the building regulations include Restricting their height Building wide roads between buildings helps to prevent the spread of fire during an earthquake and also allows buildings to sway without crashing into each other. Gas and water pipes as well as electricity cables must be well protected. Emergency response plans, these include good equipment to cope with earthquake damage, such as helicopters, diggers, and cranes, well-trained rescue teams. Doctors, nurses, and medical supplies as well as emergency supplies of water and food are also important. Cutting off gas and electricity, emergency plans that cut off gas and electricity as soon as earthquake strikes reduce fires from breaking out. Early warning systems, warning systems that tell people an earthquake has struck or a tsunami is approaching. Real-time alerts can provide crucial seconds for evacuation. Community preparedness, encouraging community members to create emergency kits, establish communication plans, and participate in earthquake drills can enhance overall preparedness. Response strategies include the following. Search and rescue, rapid deployment of trained teams to locate and assist survivors is important. Providing medical care, establishing field hospitals and providing medical aid. Providing temporary shelter, setting up shelters for displaced individuals. 
restoring infrastructure, repairing utilities, roads, and communication networks. On the 12th of January, 2010, a powerful earthquake struck the island of Haiti close to the country's capital city, Port-au-Prince. It was one of the strongest earthquakes to hit this area in the last 250 years. The earthquake had a magnitude of 7.0 on the Richter scale. The earthquake was caused by the movement along a previously unidentified fault line along the boundary between the Caribbean Plate and the North American Plate. Before the earthquake, more than 70% of people in Haiti were living on less than 10 rands per day or less than 1 US dollar. The majority of the citizens are low-income earners making Haiti the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Over 2 million people lived in Port-au-Prince before the earthquake. The capital city was densely populated, and this led to a higher number of casualties and rescue efforts were not able to cope. 86% of people in Port-au-Prince lived in poorly built, concrete buildings. Let us now look at the impact of the 2010 earthquake. 3-5 million people were affected by the earthquake. 230,000 people died. Over 300,000 people were injured. About 190,000 houses were badly damaged and 105,000 were destroyed by the earthquake. One million people became homeless. 4,000 schools were damaged or destroyed. Over 600,000 people left their homes in Port-au-Prince and went to stay with friends and relatives in other parts of Haiti. At one time, one and a half million people were living in tents. The earthquake destroyed most of Haiti's communication lines, so help and assistance from aid groups was slow to get to Haiti. More lives could have been saved if international aid had arrived sooner. After the quake there were 19 million cubic meters of rubble in Port-au-Prince. This is enough to fill a line of trucks for 4,000 kilometers. In October 2010, there was an outbreak of the disease cholera which killed 900 people and infected 216,000 others. Cholera a serious disease carried in water that causes diarrhea and vomiting and may result in death. After the earthquake, Haiti had a hard time dealing with the situation. They didn't have enough resources or a good plan to respond quickly. Their buildings and roads weren't strong enough, which made things even tougher. Plus, many people in Haiti were already struggling financially even before the earthquake hit. There were limited emergency response capabilities, inadequate infrastructure, and lack of funds to assist the affected. Another problem was that Haiti found it tricky to work with other countries and organizations that wanted to help. It was tough to coordinate everyone's efforts and manage all the aid that was pouring in. This made the situation even more challenging for Haiti as they tried to recover from the disaster. However, one year after the earthquake, 1.8 million people had received help. Nearly 500,000 people got improved temporary homes. 720,000 people were given clean water. 890,000 people were given access to safe toilets. 187,000 medical consultations were made. 236 building teams were trained. 39 schools were up and running within six months. 13,000 teachers were trained. Nearly a million books were given to schools. The earthquake in Haiti showed how vital it is to make communities stronger and more prepared for disasters. This means making buildings and roads stronger, having better plans for emergencies, and making sure development is done in a way that lasts. It also showed that countries need to work together to help each other when disasters happen and to help communities recover afterwards. We have come to the end of our class today. I enjoyed learning about how we can be better prepared to stay safe when there is an earthquake. 
Please like, subscribe and turn on the notification button so that you do not miss on our weekly uploads. Let us know in the comments section from which country you are watching so that we send you a special shout out. Before we go, please attempt these questions before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and keep well.